Welcome students. Welcome to the class of botany today. Today we will be dealing with the structure of DNA. Uh, the reason why we need to understand the detailed analysis of structure of DNA because this is very important with respect to your biomolecules chapter also with respect with, uh, to your genetics. Okay. So let's start with the structure of DNA. So when we talk about the structure of DNA, everybody knows that the structure of DNA is a double helical structure. Everybody knows about it that yes, it's a double helical structure. Of course, with the polarity, 5 prime phosphate, 3 prime hydroxyl group, anti parallel strand agreed that means 3 prime hydroxyl group and your 5 prime phosphate group. This is what the journal information that we have, but in order to understand structure of DNA better, we have to deal with these scientists. These are the scientists who actually helped us in order to identify, in order to understand the biochemical, the chemical nature of DNA. So let's start with the first person. It was uh, Joanne Fedrich Meischer. This was the first person who identified a material which has the property of genetic inheritance. But yes, of course, he did not have a name with it. So at that point of time, when he was examining first cell of Toyota, Toyota Alba, it's actually the scientific name of your barn owl. So when he was examining the pus cell of Toyota Alba, that is bound owl, he found out some material which has the heritable content. So with respect to that, he named that content as nuclein. He named the content as nuclein. On the basis of these evidences, it was Altman, it was Altman who further identified the chemical nature, who further identified the chemical nature of nuclein and came to a conclusion that it is acidic in nature and it has acid, it is acidic in nature and he named nuclein as nucleic acid. He named it as nucleic acid. These two people have already fallen into the criteria of identifying the nature of what we now know it as DNA. Okay, first the name was given nuclein and then it came to nucleic acid. Now after that again the research when a uh, research went ahead so it was W.T. Astbury. He made a very humongous contribution because this was the person who gave x-ray who gave X-ray diffraction image of what we know now, X-ray diffraction image of DNA. So it was W.T. Astbury who first gave the X-ray diffraction image of DNA. On the basis of this X-ray diffraction image of DNA, what you concluded that DNA is a polysaccharide, sorry, DNA is a polynucleotide and each nucleotide or you can say each nitrogenous base is present at a successive interval of 3.4 Armstrong. That means a distance between will be 3.4 Armstrong. Okay. Now after this, it was Franklin. 
Franklin also paid a humongous contribution because he was the first person to, said, to say that DNA is a helix. He was the first person to say that DNA is a helix. Now, on the basis of these evidences, which was very much needed by Watson and Crick, a further, a further contribution was made by Wilkins and Franklin. They were the people who gave very fine X-ray diffraction image of DNA. So what's the difference between this X-ray diffraction image of DNA and very fine X-ray diffraction? When we come to this one, that a very fine X-ray diffraction image, they were actually able to tell that they have They have nitrogen, nitrogenous bases that they have night, although these information were already given here, but still they went ahead and made a very fine X-ray diffraction image of DNA in which it was clearly seen about the nitrogenous bases, hydrogen bonds, but they did not characterize here but they did not characterize here. So this complete structure, it was immediately made available to Watson and Crick. This complete structure was made available to Watson and Crick. So it was Watson and Crick who finally concluded on the basis of these analysis that yes, there are nitrogenous bases which are there are nitrogenous bases which are attached together with the help of hydrogen bonds with the help of hydrogen bonds and yes they have anti parallel anti parallel strands of dna remember that we just did 5 prime 3 prime 3 prime 5 prime so that's when anti parallel strands so this, this information, Watson and Crick concluded with the help of Wilkins and Franklin very fine X-ray diffraction image, which they were, they were doing or they did on the basis of the above findings. Okay, so it's not alone that Watson and Crick were there. So they quickly identified the image, the double helical structure, agreed the double helical structure was given by Watson and Crick, but it could not be po have been possible with the help of these discoverers okay but yes we should not forget one contribution of one person who is very important and his name is chargaff his name is chargaff according to the chargaff according to chargaff he said that the nitrogenous bases the nitrogenous bases they always come as constant I'll tell you what does he mean by that, that he said that it always comes at constant. Say for example, he said it, the ratio, the ratio of A plus T, G plus C will always remain constant for a species. Will always remain constant for a species. I'll just quote some few examples here. So the some examples would be the ratio of A plus T say for example for humans the ratio of A plus T upon G plus C as given by Charga. So for humans it would be for humans it would be for humans. Simultaneously it would be Zero point nine three for E. coli. Okay. 
So these were the people who actually contributed a lot in order to help Watson and Crick to identify or to finally give us the double helical structure of DNA. Okay. Moving ahead, I will be discussing the structure of DNA here. Okay. So now, as you can see the structure here, this is the structure of your uh, polynucleotide, polypeptide chain. So now let's deal with it. Okay. We have already done this, but just as a general information, we are going to do here. As I am talking about the DNA, DNA has a double helical structure, agreed. These are the nitrogenous bases. So generally your DNA comprises of three things, okay. First would be your nitrogenous bases, then you have a pentose sugar, of course deoxyribose sugar. Deoxyribose sugar, and then last but not the least, you will have a phosphate group. Okay, so please pay attention here. As you can see, I talked about the chain, I talked about the polarity. This is the polarity that we talked about. Nitrogenous bases, nitrogenous bases, we will be talking about nitrogenous bases separately, but I just want you guys to focus on this point here. Deoxypentose sugar, which is of course this. If there is, of course, nitrogenous bases, nitrogenous bases. are of two types, two categories, purine purines and your pyrimidines, purines and your pyrimidines. In order to learn them, purine, pyrimidine, Pyrimidine, just remember cut. Purine AG. A stands for adenine, guanosine, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Okay, guys? This is what we are dealing with, this one, can you see, pento sugar, phosphate, nitrogenous bases, okay. If a sugar, if a pento sugar gets attached, gets attached to any nitrogenous base, If a pento sugar gets attached to any nitrogenous base, it will be doing with the help of a bond and the bond name is an glycosidic bond. It will make a nucleoside, nucleoside. So if any pento sugar, any pento sugar is attached to any nitrogenous base with the help of N-glycosidic bond. So this would be your N-glycosidic bond. Okay, N-glycosidic bond. Agreed? Again, a pentose sugar attached to any nitrogenous base 
with the help of N-glycosidic bond and this kind of arrangement is known as nucleoside. Simultaneously, if there is a complete arrangement, if there is a complete arrangement attached, attached, I'll use a red pen, if the complete arrangement is attached with the help of a phosphate bond, attached with a phosphate bond, a single attachment is known as phosphoester bond. But if you if you if you see here, there are two bonds here. There are two bonds, this bond and this bond. So it will be known as phospho diester bond. It will be known as phospho diester bond. Okay, guys. So this is you can say if there is a complete arrangement having an N glycosidic bond along with phospho diester bond. That means with pentose sugar nitrogenous base is there and yes of course a phosphate bond is also attached then a complete structure would be called as nucleotide only with sugar will be nucleoside but sugar nitrogenous base phosphate group n glycosidic bond phosphodiester bond it will make a nucleotide that is why we say polynucleotide okay Hopefully, so far, so good. Okay. So, now let us move ahead further. I will be talking a few about this purines and pyrimidines. Okay. Now, when we are talking about the structure of DNA, the nitrogenous space, okay, nitrogenous space, especially when we talk about your purine and pyrimidine, they have important structure. I will tell you, I will draw few of the structures here, not all the structures, and I'll tell you the difference. Why have I asked you about this? Purine, and I have pyrimidine. Purine, you know, it's about A, G. Pyrimidine, it's about C, U, T. Okay. Let me draw a structure for you. I want you to pay attention on the structures that I have drawn. This is just one example. This is your cytosine and this is your gonium. 
if you look at both the structures, just look at the structures carefully. I want you to pay attention here. This is your purine Ag. I've drawn one guanine and this is pyrimidine. I've just drawn one cytosine. If you see, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is 9 membered. Two rings are there. Double ring structure. Nine membered double ring structure. Whereas here, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is six membered single ring structure. Okay, so what you have to learn is that your pyrimidine, okay, they have a six member single ring structure, whereas your purines will have nine membered double ring structure. So this was all that we did today. We have done the structure of DNA. We have started from where it has been initiated, that how this initiated the structure of DNA, what are what are the what were the necessary criteria and who all were there in order to mention or to help the discovery of double helix structure for Watson and Crick. Okay? And yes, Watson and Crick along with Wilkins. They were awarded Nobel Prize for the double helical structure in 1962. Okay. So, so far whatever we have done, hope it is clear for you. Okay. In the next comment, oh, sorry, in the next class, we will be discussing more about the structure of DNA, but yes, with an approach for the genetic research, genetic research means the search for the genetic material. Thank you all.